Hello. I'm about to record a few very short videos to talk about the situations where eigenvalues and sometimes even eigenvectors are easy to determine by just looking at the matrix. Like all my other linear algebra vignettes, these videos will kind of start in the middle, not create their own context, and they assume that you're already familiar with, the, uh, with some of the basics of the topic, in this case, eigenvalues. If you're not, I certainly hope that you'll watch Gil Strang's lectures on linear algebra and that cover those, especially the lectures that cover those topics. Or read a textbook, again, I hope it's Strang's Introduction to Linear Algebra, but other textbooks suffice as well. And then watch these videos. Here's why I think these videos will be useful. Number one, I think they're insightful. I'm certainly not advocating what I'm about to talk about as a way of finding eigenvalues in most situations. It's only very special situations that allow you to see the eigenvalues easily. But, so, but those situations are more common than you think. Nature is special, physical phenomena are special, and when you model those phenomena with linear algebra, they end up with matrices that are special. One of these matrices will describe Markov processes. Uh, another one will describe eigenstates and quantum systems, and so forth. So these matrices are more common than you think. They're insightful. They'll help you understand the concept of eigenvalues and eigenvectors a little bit better. If nothing else, they'll help you understand matrix multiplication a little bit better, because of course that's the framework for this discussion. And more than anything else, I hope that you enjoy them. So let's get to it.